In this video, we are going to have a closer look at Ramsey's optimal rule of taxation. So the goal here is from a government's perspective to achieve a given revenue from the taxes on, on goods, but to minimize through setting those taxes to minimize the deadweight loss that these taxes create. If you wonder what the deadweight loss is and how we derived this formula, you have to look at the previous video. So here what we're doing is we set up a minimization problem. So we minimize the deadweight loss over the choice of two taxes. So we have here not one good, but we have two goods um, subject to a revenue constraint. Okay, so, so the government has levies taxes here on two goods, good one and good two. So you have a tax bill for good one and a tax bill or tax revenue for good two. That's the total revenue. Right? And so we want to minimize for a given revenue, we want to minimize the deadweight loss, the efficiency loss that this tax creates. And um, what it comes down to ultimately is this is this rule up here whereby the ra the ratio of the two taxes is proportional to the inverse of the, el the the demand elasticities now how do we get there that's what we're going to do first and then we're going to also talk a little bit about the interpretation of that okay so let's start with uh with this with this formula up here and so the formula for the deadweight loss we're just going to enter this here um and so we want to minimize this subject to a revenue constraint and so we have to uh, use optimization techniques in this case a lagrangian to do that um, Lagrangians always look daunting, but actually once you understand how they work and it's always exactly the same, it's really not that hard. So we have to set up a Lagrangian here, which is the Lagrangian is the deadweight loss um, minus the minus lambda, the Lagrange multiplier. And now we have to take the revenue constraint and set it equal zero and put it in between those, those parentheses here. So we have R the revenue minus T1 X1 minus T2 X2. Now, all we have to do here is uh, because we only have two variables, it's, it's actually very simple. We just have to take the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to T1 and with respect to T2. And we make our life simple and assume an interior solution. So we assume that all taxes, both taxes are positive, strictly positive. So there is no tax that in optimum is zero. That's what we simply assume. And so when we do that, so let's let's take the first derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to T1. Um, what that gives us, it's actually quite for the deadweight loss part. It's actually quite simple because um, everything that's before the T uh, epsilon one X one divided by P one is just multiplied. It's, it doesn't depend on T now that the first derivative of t1 squared is two times t so the two cancels out so all we're left with is t1 and then we have to also take the first derivative of this part so plus lambda x1 and we assume that it's an interior solution so we assume this to be equal zero Right, so we can now uh, immediately solve this for the, the that Lagrange multiplier lambda, which uh, has, if you take more advanced uh, economics courses, you will learn that it actually has an economic interpretation. For the moment, we will leave that aside and we just have to basically through substitution and multiplication, we have to get rid of this, this parameter lambda. Um, okay, so the way we do this is is very simple. You can already see here that uh, first of all x1 cancels out 
And so we can basically then move uh, Lambda uh, over uh, straight away and, and simply have Lambda equals Epsilon one divided by P one times T one. Now you can see here from those formula up, up, up at the top here, that the first derivative for of the Lagrangian with respect to T two will look the exact same. Okay, so 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 lambda. If if we do the same, and I'm I'm taking a shortcut here. If we do the same for T two, we end up with the exact same. And so now, because lambda is here and lambda is there, we can equate the two. And once once we do that. Um, what we can we can say okay epsilon one divided by p sorry p one times t one equals epsilon two divided by p two times t two and because we want to know here what the optimal ratio of both taxes is so tax one relative to tax two what we're gonna do here is um, we're going to set them in relation to one another. Okay, and then on the right hand side, we have epsilon two divided by P two over epsilon one divided by P one. Now that that is a very, very important I'm just gonna zoom in. So you see that is, is a very important formula. Um, that you encounter is, is one of the classics of, of public economics, if you want. What does it tell us? Well, it tells us something about if you have two goods and you want to levy a different tax on each good, how should the ratio of these taxes be? So what ratio of these taxes would minimize the deadweight loss for a given level of revenue? Okay. And so, so, so that's what the left hand side tells you. Now, the, so, so the, the left hand side just tells you, okay, there is this ratio of taxes and the right hand side tells us then what that ratio should be. And what that ratio should be is it should be proportional to the inverse of the elasticities. Right? So what elasticities, what are those elasticities? They are the slopes of the demand curves for those goods. Remember last time we talked about goods with an elastic demand and with an inelastic demand. And we know that when the demand is very elastic, the second prices change, consumers find it very easy to move away and to substitute away and consume something else. Whereas if demand is inelastic, they don't. And what the inverse elasticity tells us is that the goods that for which demand is inelastic should be taxed more than goods for which demand is highly elastic. That's that's what it tells us. Okay. So so let me um, let me quickly draw this for you here, just just to to. Um, visualize this point. So here we have quantity and price and we do the same down here. Um, quantity and price. So here we have a very inelastic demand curve and we here we have a very elastic demand curve. Okay? And so again, what does the, the, the elastic demand curve, what does that, that mean? It means that, sorry, the, the inelastic demand curve means, let's say if we go from P1 to P2, somewhere down here, that the corresponding change in the quantity consumed let's call it Q1 and Q2, that corresponding change is very small. So people more or less always consume the same quantity regardless of the price. The, the, the most extreme case would be if the demand curve was just a, 
a, a vertical line, then regardless what the price is, people will always consume the, the same amount. And now on to the, uh, the elastic demand curve. So let's again cons consider two prices, P1 and P2, and you can see here that the corresponding change in the amount of, good, of that good that is demanded by people is a lot bigger. Okay? And you can also immediately see from this, it's not drawn fully at scale, but it's also not that far off. Um, you can see here that immediately that the deadweight loss that you have here when demand is inelastic, let's call this DWL1, is a lot smaller than the deadweight loss that we have here at DWL2. Yeah, so, so DWL1 is smaller than DWL2. And so the Ramsey rule tells us if you have these two goods and you have one good where demand is very elastic and for the other where it's not very elastic, you should have a higher tax on the good where the demand is less elastic, right? Because it minimizes the, um, the dead weight loss. So what the government would do here, let's say P1 is the, the, the starting level, uh, sorry, let's say P2 is the starting level in price that makes it easier. Um, what the government would do is it would levy a very small tax. Let me do the taxes in red here. It would levy a very small tax on um, on this good so that, uh, that the tax would be very small and it would levy a very high tax, maybe the difference between P1 and P2 on, on that good. Okay, so, so then obviously the, the dead weight loss that we get then, let me shade this now in red, is again for this good is the same as before, but for that good is, is only very small. It's only that bit here. Okay? And so, so we would get the same amount of revenue as before, but, but now we have minimized the dead weight loss. Again, this is not drawn at scale, but that's the logic that underlies all that. Hmm. Um, now you can obviously also look at this for, uh, for more, more than one good because obviously, or for more than two goods. Um, and basically we, we can generalize the, the Ramsey rule that the, in, in the sense that uh, at the, the taxes should be set in such a way that the, the marginal deadweight loss and should be proportional to the marginal revenue. Okay, so that the, um, if, you levy, if you raise the tax, the increase in the deadweight loss has to equal the increase in the revenue. Okay? If, uh, the, if the increase in the deadweight loss is, is higher than the increase in the revenue, the tax is too high. If the, if the increase in the revenue is higher than the deadweight loss, the tax is actually too low because if I increase the tax, I get an efficiency gain because I get more in revenue than I lose out in the deadweight loss. Okay? And the sweet spot is in between, which is that the marginal revenue and the marginal deadweight loss are the same. And that, that's, if you have lots of goods that you tax, then that's the rule to, to follow. Now let's think for a second about the, the potential implications about this. So what you have to realize is that in the Ramsey model, each good has a different tax rate, depending on the demand elasticity. It also means then that higher goods should be taxed or that goods with less elastic demand should be taxed more. Now this is for, a government should follow that rule if efficiency concerns are all that matter. But we have to be careful. Um, so this is important food for thought. But we have to be careful because there may be equity concerns here that, that are not trivial. Why? 
Well, because a lot of necessities and lots of things that people like to consume on a regular basis, the demand for those is, is relatively inelastic. And so, so think about, you know, everything you, you, you eat and drink on a daily basis, or think about, you know, the alcoholic drinks people consume uh, on the weekend. There may be some spikes in demand around Christmas time or, or maybe around uh, football or rugby championships. But, but apart from that, the demand is, is mostly the same and, and it doesn't really, doesn't really change so much when prices change, right? The same goes for, for petrol, for example. Um, now, the big problem here is that the Ramsey rule would tell us that we should, should have, have high taxes on, on petrol, on basic foods. You know, people will always consume bread and milk regardless of what the price is, unless it's extortionate. Um, and so, so on lots of those basic necessities, we would have to have a high tax rate. Whereas on all sorts of luxury goods, you know, think about expensive cars or expensive watches or jewelry or something like that, where the demand tends to react a lot to changes in prices, um, we would have to have a low tax rate. That obviously our intuition tells us that's not fair. And that's why no government no government applies the Ramsey rule explicit or exactly as, as it would, would work according to this theory. Um, but they always also include some equity concerns here and, and simply don't tax basic necessities as much as the Ramsey rule would tell us. And some do even the opposite and, and tax basic goods very little. Um, and then, you know, for example, we have a low VAT rate in, in Ireland on, on foods, but then a higher VAT rate on other consumption goods. Right? So that, that's an example of almost the inverse of the Ramsey rule. And the reason is that, that presumably for the Irish government, the equity concerns are more important than the efficiency concerns. That by no means, it, that mean, does not mean at all that, that, the, the Irish government follows here a poor economic policy. It simply means that equity has a higher value for the government and probably also for society as a whole than efficiency. And that, that's, that's fair enough. And, and that's, that's, that's very, very, I think that that's very legitimate. But we also have to be aware that, that uh, if, if the concern is that we want to have as little deadweight loss as possible, then the, the, the Ramsey rule would actually be the one to follow.